You are listening to Charting Cryptos, Commodities, and Currencies. We are looking at the 24-hour-a-day Bitcoin and Ethereum charts in the cryptocurrencies. We'll look at Bitwise, the top 10 cryptocurrencies. That's an ETF. And everything else we'll look at will be ETFs. But as we jump into Bitcoin and Ethereum and most of these, let's just go ahead and expand the weekly screen and take a look at and, you know, this is helpful to us also to just sort of see where things have been over time. And we're going all the way back here to like September, August of 2021. And, of course, we saw Bitcoin really fly up, then cranked over, popped up again, and then went on this really hammer down till right at the beginning of this year and then went up in surges. The first surge went up. Topped out there in late February, popped down, started going again in mid-March, and then about mid-April rolled over, and then popped up again in mid-June, and then back down and started moving up into the green in mid-September. And we see as Bitcoin continues to move. Now, you look at the volume down here at the bottom of the screen, you can see well above average volume last week and the week before above average volume. This week, volume's pretty weak. Now, as we look at the candle, candle looks okay. This 24 hour a day Bitcoin chart down a little bit for the day. Want to see if we'll reach those highs or has Bitcoin sort of fired off its round because as we look at what it's done before, we can see here popped up quite a bit that first week, really pretty much topped out that second week, and then just sort of started devolving. We did hit another high these two weeks, but again, the majority of the movement was captured really in those first two weeks. Saw the same kind of thing again uh, there in the March move and really saw it here in the June move. Now in this one where it sort of shied us off quite a bit, didn't it? Went up, started to pull back on the week beginning the 9th of October, gained some energy and then really hammered up last week. So we'll wait, watch and see how Bitcoin continues to move. Now Ethereum, you know, triggered many, many times by Bitcoin, of course. What do we see here? Now it had, you know, just sort of a long decline uh, tried to pop up there in late September, early October, then sort of died on the vine again these last two weeks, particularly last week, trying to surge up. We look down here at volume. It's hard to even see any volume down there. I mean, look at the volume here, how high the average was. And of course, the spike as, as Ethereum was just jamming up, uh, even in these this first down move, lots of volume. Uh, and then it just petering off. You've had, you know, one or two times uh, that it's moved, but now the volume is just so down in Ethereum. We'll keep an eye on things, but again, hard to find a lot. Now, we look at Bitwise, we can see, again, the moves on this one are a little easier to see. You jumped in here, it did move up uh, some more and then started petering off there in early February. Started up again going into the green. Now, this spinning top, not a good idea, as we can see. Uh, and then things moved over. Started up again, went up. Then we saw things start with a spinning top. If you would have waited, that would have been fine. Jumped in, peaked, and then devolved. And this last one, again, nice green up candle wick on top. Really popped up last week up a little bit for the day. So again, this is the top 10, and I explain this every week, it's Bitwise 10 Crypto Index Fund, top 10 cryptocurrencies weighted as per market share. So the big dog is of course Bitcoin, then further down the line, of course, you have Ethereum and the others. Now let's move from cryptocurrencies to commodities. Have just a few of those to show you. Copper, which had been going down, had some indecision last week, popping up this week. Again, not a lot to see there and doesn't give us a lot of hope as to some real action. It pops up and then we'll draw back. So again, just taking a look at it. Silver, like gold, uh, we can see where silver really turned around with higher than average volume 
on that first up week, slowing down last week, uh, moving up higher than last week this week, but not reaching the high as before. Down for the day, as I record this, 1.69%. Soybeans had been hammering down the last three weeks, trying to gain a little bit of energy. We look at the United States Gasoline Fund. I'd like to see this just keep going down. Of course, it had moved up starting in uh, mid-May and climbed, dropped over a little there in late August, popped up again in September to mid-September, then down. Last two weeks, uh, really, you know, just sort of indecisive. And then this week, down some. What do we see with wheat? Now, of course, so much of the world, you know, counts on wheat in order to eat. We saw wheat really heading down, tried to pop up a little bit starting in mid-October, and then this week another downer. Hadn't reached the low that we saw back in late September, but again, looks like it's trying to roll over on us. That's where we are with commodities. Not a whole lot to see there, but of course you can take from it as to what's happening around the world with the, uh, you know, the, the I'm not going to say implosion, but a lot of problems, both in Europe with the war with Ukraine, now in the Middle East with Israel and its Arab neighbors, a lot of uncertainty in the market. Let's look at the currencies, several of them from around the world. We'll start first with the euro. Euro had weeks and weeks and weeks of down moves. We got a bunch of indecision kicking into the market in mid-October, popped up last week, but again, just average volume. This week, uh, not much volume at all. Looks like it's slowing down a lot. Maybe it's getting ready to roll over again with all the disruptions and potential problems coming into the winter time with energy not only from Russia affecting the potential euro, but of course from the Middle East, depending on how bad things go there. We'll also take a look at the Swiss franc. It, of course, had been moving up for three weeks. Not a lot of volume there. And then this week, a downer. As we look at the Canadian dollar, it tried to move up there in mid to late September. And, of course, heading down itself. Lastly, we'll take a look at the yen just continuing to head down. Uh, look at all that down volume already this Weak, I mean, above average down volume. Now, now, we do see a spinning top here. Is it maybe trying to find a bottom to start moving up? Don't know, but you can see lots of indecision there. So we'll continue to take a look at these things, learn from them. Like I tell you every week, I love spending this time with you going over what's up with cryptocurrencies, what's going on around the world with real things like commodities, stuff that people need to eat, they need for business applications, whether it's copper, whether it's silver, all those types of things. And of course, the other interesting commodities, fuel, energy, gasoline, natural gas, oil, those types of things. That's where we are, folks. So appreciate you being with us. Always love to hear from you. CW at chartingwealth.com. God bless.